Very close in which enabled Brent to steal game number three. Uh, yeah, to force game number three. But what if this time around both teams just totally skip that? What if it goes over? I don't yeah. think, I honestly don't think that would ever be the case because again, both of them would have the exact same composition. So unless this is like a classic where you can kind of like pick, uh, pick the exact same things where you can have double of things even, I think that's when you'll probably get to see it, but not in a competitive sense. Cause again, you can't have two shows oh, yeah. and two people no, no, looking no, no, no. to be the way of the dragon. I mean, still around the same rules it's yeah. just like how teams like rrq would play or evos sg how it's just uh, way out there I, I was hoping that you know I, I see those five heroes somewhat of sorts all getting axed out in this first phase just say yeah. okay let's yeah, play yeah, a yeah, different yeah. draft exactly and, like a brand new role yeah I, i'm getting what leo is saying but that's possibly not gonna happen because we're going back to square one same sort of band that we see day in day out some of the most hated heroes for pro players, I gotta say. Honestly, the way I see it is both of the coaches look at each other and they're just gonna text each other. One of them is go one of them, either Nasi Udo or Ducky is just gonna walk away and all we're gonna hear is, ah, oh, hell no, and go out and continue on with this draft. Because again, Yishin Shin, Natalia out of the picture, Brody and Matilda again. This is slightly straying away, but the big powerhouse is still on the table. They wouldn't want the Matilda to go to uh, Brand Esports on few, but Alter Ego here is forgetting something they're not banning out the selena mm -hmm. mm, that might open up for a few you're right but butters my question to you is if let's say they totally forget the selena they don't ban the selena right here is that worth first picking i mean a selena and the grub might just work no i mean brandy sports yeah, gets yeah, one yeah, pick yeah 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 but still if even if you don't get or even if you don't give the priority to the tank as much the Serena just enables a lot of these tanks to do well. Mm. Yeah. And now I'm looking at the bands, this changes everything because that sort of draft that we talked about is actually very much basing on this Yuzong pick where, of course, he is going to be soaking all these sort of retention spans alongside with, of course, you know what, the Cho. But now that you get rid of this dragon, it definitely diversifies this entirety of the meta that they will be playing. Kind of opens it up, kind of opens it up, and still out there is the Selena. Gideon, I was hearing you were very vocal about disagreeing. Not a fan of the Selena first pick? No, not a fan of it at all. Not Especially when Bren is going to be on that side. I almost guarantee you, if Benedetta is not banned out, they will take it for themselves. Worst comes to worst, Jawhead, and then Alter Ego is just going to say, oh, I'm just going to lock in Cho and Benedetta. It just makes sense. But Alter Ego, they ban out the Benedetta. Keep that in mind. Well, Jawhead or Selena? Ooh, I would say it, it's either Jawhead or Esmeralda. Oh, wait, no, it's Bren on this side. Yeah, yeah Jawhead or yeah. Selena is more like right? it. Uh huh. I think Esmeralda is. Also, still. Esmeralda, honestly, ooh, honestly ooh. Esmeralda is a good pick for any of these two teams. Mm -hmm. So, Bren, they're, they're trying to talk about it right now. Who will be the most beneficial pick for this first slot? I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'm leaning on to others. Like, if I if I was trying to draft for the team, I would probably want to jump on the Esmeralda. But considering the data that we've seen so far, the history, the history, yeah, Esmeralda doesn't exactly have the best win rate. Like, you can see moments where it's like impossible to deal with. But now you gotta rely on the things that work, Silvana. Yeah, but definitely we gotta see the smirk coming in from the side of Alter Ego. Is this a setup or what? Because they obviously have choices to ban it out. Instead, they ban out the Matilda, knowing for the fact that this Sylvana is being left out in the open. And this is that hot pick throughout the entirety of the playoffs that has been making those big plays with the Imperial Justice. So how could you possibly get, a, you know, the high priority sort of mages to play out here without, you know, Forgetting about your oh. high tier picks and Selena, Esmeralda, both all in one. Yep. I like the it out. picks coming up here from Alter Ego. It seems just like something that Bren would pick mm. if there were in their head side. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And now this one dominant pick, Lancelot has been working out for both sides here and has been the winning fa one of the winning factors as they push in towards this third game. But final pick coming in, what are they going to do with this one? Lapu Lapu still on the table, Benedetta is gone, and Yuzong is gone, so that's going to be one of the stronger offlaners. But don't forget, Wan Wan is available. Yeah, that definitely is a very strong marksman out there. And heading it towards the second phase of the band, of course, there's going to be a lot more things to be asked off of the list after Rainbow selects this oh. one. Ooh. Yeah, this Ooh. is what I was, I was saying. Um, thinking that maybe it's Lusty on the Sylvana. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if 
this is as quick as the prestige, if this was like a magic trick, that you already show that, oh, just kidding, this is actually going to be on Okay, I, I got this really random taunt. Like, you, you see there's a lot of lockdown and such. What if they take one copy of the playbook of Ruby's goals? Diggy. That's a pretty good shout, yeah. though. Yeah. You think you think they would you think they would actually do it though? There's a possibility if it negates all the initiation mechanics you have on your side, it would do you good. Now, they have the Selena, they just have to pick the diggy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Alter Ego has more room to do that. I mean, of course, but knowing Alter Ego, that sounds off brand. It's like, oh yeah, we're gonna take Diggy, it's gonna have Aegis, we're gonna play super defensive. It sounds it doesn't sound like Alter Ego. Alter Ego is aggressive, Alter Ego yeah. dominates in lane, and that's how they take these plays further and further and further, unless push comes to shove, Bren comes along and says, Hey, we're able to push back. Hmm, first ball is in the court of Alter Ego Esports for the first pick of phase number two, so it really has to be more mages to be locked away from the grasp of a brand esports right now. Lunox, honestly, we haven't seen that much from the side of brand esports. So is this a wordy ban that we're looking at here? And other than that, what else Alter Ego wants to remove? It it stops the Esmeralda for, uh, from being relevant into the early game. Like, you have your Falling Star Moon, but if there is ever a Lunox on that side, Chaos Darkening and Chaos Bolts will take you out. That's one. I'm one, They're 100% sure of that, and they do not want that to happen. Just give your Esmeralda a good life. Yep, and uh, that's coming out of the side lane. So what's missing from Brenny Sports that possibly also you can attack? While we wait for this ban, uh, there is the side lane. It's actually both side lanes. They need to fill in both side uh. lanes here. And Brandy Sports is choking out Leo Murphy. I like it that they're, yeah, they're respecting Leo Murphy with that tick reel because Leo Murphy plays one mean tick reel. He can control people and looking at how dive heavy this composition for Brent Esports is, it only takes one flicker and one implosion to turn things around. Mm -hmm. I totally agree there. And now Alter Ego, I I'm noticing that they want to give Pi a really, a Pi or, a, the Pi or Selly Boy a really good time. They are looking for that counter matchup against Brent Esports. And now, ooh, even better, Brent ban uh, bans out that draw head here. Alter Ego, my, ge uh, my guess here is that they're trying to go for this big setup, but they want to know what the offlane of Brent Esports is. I don't think they're going to blind Lapu Lapu here. I feel like they're probably going to go for, yeah, their support pick. It's going to be the Hilda. And now, Brent, if they lock into Lapu Lapu, or if they look to try to get their scaling uh, side laner, like preemptively go for the one one, at least Alter Ego will have options to deal with. Well, I think this is the only chance they got. Again, two last picks, right? And they need to fill in uh, both the XP lane and the gold lane. Yep. And I'm liking what you're throwing out to the universe, man. Maybe the 1-1, one, one, and then give something to Flap Easy, which is, yeah, that's the Lapu Lapu. Yeah, good call, because we haven't seen that oh. band coming through, but they're bringing it in the box here. Yeah. So let's talk us through, because when you see links, this is where you actually want to head to. I, yeah, I guess Baksha is just a reaction pick for the Hilda. And the Esmeralda. It's really, yeah, it's really good because the thing is, if you see the Hilda and you get a damage on her, then that means you will be forced out of that brush and you won't be. If, he stay, if she stays there, then that only means she's not going to get all the regeneration that is intended for her just because of your passives. Exactly. These are the, just the pseudo counters for Esmeralda. We've seen it in previous seasons before. You know, the Lunox is a way to kind of just shut down the Esmeralda early on. And then when Esmeralda got really, got buffed up and got really strong in the early stages of the game where she got a little too overpowered, Baxia came in to kind of fill that hole to make sure, hey, my Tatois Poissons is really, really powerful against that regeneration, like Butter said. But now, Alter Ego going to have to make a choice here. They see it, but now they're going to be locking in the Claude. Oh very, very reliable, can scale, hyper-powered into the late game in comparison to 1-1. One, one. However, it's not going to be as safe. Okay, we haven't heard this shout for a while, and after locking in towards the clock here, they're getting that rejoice confidence that, hey, we finally get the pick that we want, and yeah, they're kind of happy they're not dealing with any of that sort of 1-1 one, one coming in, so I'm pretty sure you guys got to talk about this one. L let's just say that few plays one uh, mean championship Selena. Let's not forget the deal. The deal. This is in his playbook. He plays this a lot as well. And as you can hear at the back, ladies and gentlemen, 
the screams from these teams. They're just coming in. Yeah, very, very <laughs> kind words back and forth here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, this is where, you know, it's a whole lot of all these sort of hashtags going up in the chat all over the place. So hopefully your predictions and your coins will be getting double right after this because this is the very last game of the evening in the M2 World Championship before we go into Five our grand final runs tomorrow. All battle. right, people in chat, people Smash at Cafe Cinemas, make sure you're making some noise for your favorite Welcome teams and show your support legend. in the chat wherever you are. This is the final game. Brand Esports versus Alter Ego. Take it away, casters. Mm. Now, we are seeing Leo Murphy start off with a good invade, just trying it out, just trying to get information, and this is what Leo Murphy does best. Now, a few is left into the middle lane. Lusty does get the tank show he with a concussive blast. And on the top lane, there is a Farsa and the Claude facing Ooh. up against each other in the gold lane. And I like that matchup, by the way, because they're both range and they can each just bother the other. Now Lusty spending here the Cyclone Eye. Flapteasy smells that there's a fight going on. Leo Murphy gets caught in by Carlteasy Butters. It's, it's blowing up right now. And Leo Murphy is the target. Lusty gets away. And look at this. A four-man, a three-man rotate to the jungle just to punish whatever Alter Ego is doing. Hilda here, Leo Murphy is not getting the best start in the early game. Oh, okay. Showing some respect, I just assume, coming from FubTZ with the stickers. And, you know, it's just like Hilda at the very end of the day. He's just giving the first blood, of course. But who is it giving to is the question here because Lusty can snowball out this. Oh! Phantom execution into the rollout. They catch him. 2-0 currently is the score. Butters, it's a very small lead, but Brenny Sports, I think they've understood what Alter Ego is all about. How they've been rotating, how they've been moving. Yeah, Liam Murphy is, do, is doing his job. But remember, you should not try to tunnel vision as much. If they can punish you like that and they have good damage, then might as well just back off and give a bit of a breather for your team in terms of giving gold to the enemy. Oh, oh, the yeah. turtle, though. And there is going to be the turtle, and right now, the Lance will secure it. Yam here getting called out. Does he have the flicker, though? No, he doesn't. The Esmeralda is stuck there. That is going to be Lusty taking that kill. Carl getting called out. Look at this HP bar. One more hit will take him down, but Leo Murphy is just forced to control Flap. Phew is still there in the enemy jungle, what? and Telly Boy. Selly Boy and Dudil, Lee Pai, they are here, they react, and Farsa is still up top. <laughs> wow, I couldn't believe that Red Esports actually get away with so much out of that, and that sort of push and pull going inside the jungle just for that sake of the buff definitely isn't all too worth it for Alter Ego Esports. Yeah, of course, the Murphy goes down twice, and the one that managed to be punished to cure is definitely going to be Yam, which will definitely hurt in terms of getting these items up much earlier on. But here comes Lusty. As you can see, Celiboy is still not getting that orange buff. And this could be the time where Alter Ego comes for the revenge in terms of fights. Because when Celiboy gets this, he gets the damage output that he needs. And they can just go at it, especially against the Lancelot. Now Lance has the Nimble Blade. Leo Murphy there just having a bit of a scuffle with Flap TZ. Yeah, and of course, look at the early stage of the game here. Yes, as much as Alter Ego is having a very hard time, the mid game is where it matters the most because that's where they need a lot of all these things to come online, especially Pi as well as Charlie Boy. But oh boy, there comes a little bit of catch. And Flap TZ with the rollout, and that is going to be Lancelot holding on to Leo Murphy. Leo May Murphy just goes down, Odell gets kicked. Polystar Moon hits on Flap, and Yam, I don't think that's the best. Thing for you to do. That is going to be the Tempest of Blades. It will be used to get away. And Carl Deasy here on a killing spree. 5 0. 
four minutes into the game. Holy oh. guacamole, nice catch there. And all this time, it was just pie farming. And I'm wondering if it's worth it, all this gold he was getting, contra you were saying. Yeah, and he timed it also well for the perfect execution. Just to dive straight to secure that kill. And what else is secure? Another turtle in the back. Two for two here. Now, they did this earlier against Todak. They were getting a lot of the turtles, but the thing is, they're not really converting it into turrets. Now, they should avoid that if that happens, and Pai almost getting caught, but he will stay alive. Mm -hmm. Look at how effective Plaptizi is doing all the dirty work. Only five assists in such a short span of time. Five minutes on the clock, and what else should we expect here? Oh yeah, five assists, good note. That means he's been part of every team fight from minute zero. I think it's time for us to actually go for an item check because Chelly Boy just picked up his Raptor machete. Looking at the other side, Carl Tizi, he has that and some. He's building up a little faster given the 2,000 gold lead on the side of Brenny Sports. But check out Flap Tizi as well. He should be getting quite a bit of kit. Two, he has uh, one half of that uh, Cursed Helm. And right now, oh, the first kill for Alter Ego. That's going to be a shutdown on Toribo. And those are the opportunities that Alter Ego can just go for. The link, the mobility on him, the arrows, they still have a lot of ways to catch up now. Yam using the Fallen Star Moon wisely, he just goes for the escape. Ooh. Okay. Well, we're going in towards this situation where Ren does not want to make the same mistake. And seemingly enough, speaking of which, Charlie Boy just moves right in and goes in for setup, and that's where Pi gets his first kill too. That's a lot of resources spent just to take down Lusty, but oh. I think at this point it's worth it. It's because Alter Ego should find everything for free that they can now. Feathered Airstrike coming in here, Blazing Duet by Pi, and that's gonna be few taken down by a notch, but from behind, Flap Easy catches him. He says, Welcome to the jungle. This may be your side of the map, but hold up, they're not done. Falling Star Moon by Yam, they get something back, and few bites it. Yeah, oh, it's Leo not Marie. over. He's trying to make himself alive out of the situation, but it's a mega kill that will be in the hands of Carl Teasy. Oh, ready for and straight away purchases that blade of have to seize. Now and towards mid lane. Kaboom! Crashes and towards Chelly Boy. Chelly Boy here. He's doing a great job finding those pickoffs. Like he's all over the map. He's trying to right, find the right targets and he's been getting a lot of these pickoffs. Now, if you could check that he has two assists, but technically the damage output isn't still enough out of this moment. And Yam here using the Purify to get away from that Imperial Justice. Another turtle going to the side here of Bren. Yeah, and uh, speaking of which, I just feel that Alter EO Esports is just looking for that late game play. Run Esports, like what I tried to mention earlier before the fight started, they need to learn from some of all these past games where Omega Esports have given too much of time for the RQ to make a comeback, and that's where Ling gets a lot more dangerous. But Flaptizi still all over the map. Odil gets caught out. Odil using that mark. But Coral just goes in for the jugular. And as you can see, Yamir doesn't have the purify. There goes that feathered airstrike, but it won't be enough. As they still have to chase down Yam and Yam here. He's being chased by attack and support, and they did not go all in on this. Oh! And Pai gets punished for staying in the enemy's jungle. At every turn, Bren Esports just finds a way to one-up Alter Ego. And this is obviously a different team that we've seen since the playoffs started. And right now, they're going to find one from the bottom lane. Chelly Boy gets one on Toribo. And Ew. here comes Few, going to jump in. Misses the Imperial Justice. But it's fine. At least he saves that lane. And Chelly Boy here. He's trying to get away, he will be able to. And uh, you were saying, Contra? Yeah, and uh, well, I definitely lost my train of thoughts, but we are already seeing a lot of all these errors that were forced coming from the side of Alter Ego. And with that, Baptizi is trying his best to just uh, get himself the lane cleared up, but Endless Battle has been purchased. And okay, I got my points back because Kaltizi. He's definitely looking like the MVP right now. If it's not him, definitely it's not easy. And they catch Selena out, and that is going to be Odile going down once again. Feathered Airstrike here using it at its maximum potential. Brent Esports, they're just making it happen for them into the mid game. And look at that knockoff. 
Purify is available for Yam, though. I don't think they'll go for the full engage. Dill Murphy now getting chased by three members inside of Brand Esports. I'm not sure if the rest of Outer Ego is going to respond to this one because he's looking pretty healthy and confident with this one. But fine, he comes from the back. Oh. They do expect this one. Blazing to it on towards Lusty. He might actually go down. Oh. Flicker coming out as well. But here comes the Calvary. Revoke opens up the Defender and Strike, but they are still chasing oh. right in. But oh. Dill Murphy coming from the back. He tries to stop Lusty. Oh, Lusty escapes. Masterful maneuvering from both teams. It was the in and out that kept both teams alive. Not a single casualty. And I must say, what priority setting here by Alter Ego because all this time the reason why they could not lay down so much firepower is because they were so focused on pushing the top lane. And now because of that, Oh. Their patience has paid off. That's going to be the second tier turret taken down. Now, Carl Dizzy has set his eyes on the Leo Murphy. Oh. Lusty puts in the final blow. Just look at how big this Lancelot gets. And, well, we're just going to be stacking more and more kills if this is the raid that Alter Ego Esports is going. And the Lord is already up online. Yeah, he's getting caught up by Carl Dizzy. But remember, just try to remember that there is still scaling onto the side of Alter Ego Esports. They will try to take down Yam. Yam here will get away, but oh! they get the catch on oh, Shelly Boy. They said Yam is small fry. We want Shelly Boy. We want to shut down this Ling. And boy, did they get their cake and eat it too. At this point, as much as you see that 12k, I mean 12k on the side of Brand Esports, but the gold differential is only 2,000 at the moment. Now with the Lord dropping down to 50%, this is definitely that monumental fight that they need to win for Outer Ego Esports. But, oh, Wainer Dragon connects towards Leo Murphy as Yam over the back tries to look for a pick, but he's going sideways. And I'm not sure if they're getting anywhere near this Lord, but Outer Ego, they're pretty much flush out with two members down. Carl Teasy here just going straight for that purple. He knows that Chelly Boy needs this to have his maximum fighting potential. Oh! Still will be the next target. It won't be enough. With a sliver of HP, he lives. But the soul of lava does its job. That's going to be a triple kill. Salibo here with the Tempest of Blades. Will he get away? Yes, he will. Three for none, though, still. Three for none. And now this is just a prime time for Brenny Sports to make big moves, whether it be taking this lane down bottom, first tier turret still standing, or checking out Lord if it's a good take. Right now, item check, 12 minutes in. That's going to be Carl TZ building up to his temp uh, his uh, Blade of Despair. On the other hand, Alter Ego Esports. How's Chelly Boy feeling? Sitting at 1, 1, and 2. He has his... Um, he has his uh, Demon Hunter sword already. I think this up next is going to be a Berserker's Fury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, just looking at even the waves not being managed right now, Udil has just arrived to the scene, but the Lord already falling pretty low. Lil Murphy stays high, but he can't really get that execution, can he? As you can see, the Lord has already taken Fiber and Esports. Oh my goodness, the screams, the shouts, that caught me off guard. Now they have that knock-up on Yam. And they even get the Lord two members here for the side of Alter Ego. They are down for the count. Bren Esports, they are just controlling this game. Yeah, and before that Lord, and of course that fight that just broke out, it was only about two to 3,000, and this is definitely going to be big disparities as he tries to land a Tempest, but they have to make a run for it live. They can't deal with this big fat Lancelot right in front of their face. They're going to be oh. using up the Feathered Airstrike as well just to shoot them all the way back and towards the base, and let's see how much can they open up right here because Knock, knock, the Lord is here. Few is not shy to use his ult just to clear waves or to push the rest of Alter Ego back. Mm. Not at all. Not at all. Alter Ego, can they hold the line? The Lord is still up. Half HP, inhibitor turret onto the bottom lane is down. Top lane still has an outer turret. Let's see what Bren Esports thinks that they have to do. Oh and boy. look at that knock up to save Rebo. Rebo is here in the middle and he will go for the blinker. Shelly Boy going in for that Farsa. He uses wings by wings and two turrets going to the side of Red Esports while everything of that was happening. Oh, well, Leo here is going to be having Shelly Boy having triple as the sitting tongue, but Shelly Boy gets picked up. He is legendary 13 and 0 called Teasy. I, Ladies and gentlemen, the prodigy is in the building. I hope that the viewers can just hear the sh screaming and shouting here between the players. 
This is getting very intense. Yep, the atmosphere is electrifying. Alter Ego Esports holding on for dear life to stay in this tournament. And so far, Brain Esports, they're feeling it with this 8,000 gold lead. Here, 14 minutes, 30 seconds into game number three. 19 to six, and they're gonna start choking Chelly Boy out. Yeah, and of course, we're going to be seeing Flapteezy here tanking every single one of these hits coming from Alter Ego while Lusty is chasing from the back. He's trying to find that way of the dragon, but here goes that pink, and it will be Carl Teezy. Who else will get the kill as they do get members of the Son of Alter Ego in strats? It's a double for Carl. Is he going to get the, the triple right here? But of course, Alter Ego, they say enough is enough. We're going to be retreating. It's time for a look for alternatives because this is not working out. Remember, still, the clock is ticking for Bren Esports. They should end this now. The flood is getting big. Oh, here we go. Feathered airstrike started in by the doctor, Leo Murphy, retreating. This turret is getting the brunt of all of Bren Esports' frustration, anger, and now sweet, sweet victory is imminent. What can Alter Ego, Alter Ego do here to, 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 to just extend this match to really get Pi online. Just to see how they are extending this match, this is where Chelly Boy has a lot of duty to play because he has to cut every single wave that he sees until that wall appears and then that's where it's a 50-50, you know? And Alter Eagle, he needs to respond, but how do they stop Call Easy? There's no answer to that up till this 15 minute mark. There, There is another wave though. He can go for the Lord Steel. Mm. He is, he does have the retribution, he can go through walls, and that might be the riskiest play, but if they do it, that's high risk, high reward. All right, good news and bad news for Alter Ego. Yeah, they're armed for the lane cutting. They do have the steal. Bad news is, I don't think Brandy Sport is going to make it easy. All right, check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. If you have it yet, please pay attention to the left side of your screen. Carl Teezy and Flap Teezy, the Teezy brothers, have mirrored stats. 15, 0 and 5, and 1, 0 and 15. This next Lord is up and online, luminous as it is. That's top and bottom pushed in by Brandy Sports, and this fight's gonna break out. That's gonna be a knock up on a Leo Murphy. They haven't finished the job. That's gonna be the way of the dragon pushing him back to retreat. Kelly Boy is taking quite a bit of damage. Tempers of Blaze to get out of here. Pi as well. Battle Mirror Image out. That's about less than half health for three members of Brand Esports. And despite that, Alter Ego knows that this is not a fight they can win. They disengage. Yeah, they yeah. have to disengage right now, but they are threatening them by just having members by the corners of the Lord. Just, just look at this right now. Like, Leo Murphy, he's basically a punching bag every single time he appears himself. Like, how far can he go when he's fighting against this Lancelot? Alter Ego as well. They they almost took down a member here for the side of Freddy Sports. Oh. And yeah, he does have the Purify. He's not going to go for it as it is right now. He can still get out. He's oh, waiting side. for the Wave of the Dragon. But Sally Boy here is the next target. He just goes for the Finch Boys. Yep. He gets away. And Carl is the target of Yam. And there it is. Purify will be used, Carantizi almost going down, and he just recalls away. I like the small things that these teams are doing to just get that advantage. Yeah, and you can definitely see that he didn't even pop that immortality, so all that invested effort coming in from Yam as well, so far haven't been able to just get that to really pick up that he wants to. And speaking of which, Bill going for the invade. Oh. Ash is Sally Boy and Tep is a plane to be used. Here we go. The fight has already broken now, ladies and gentlemen. This might be the last one. Better dare strike by the doctor. Pi gets blasted. Flap TZ gets the kill. And that's a minus one on the side of Alter Ego. Make that a minus two. Another oh, added to the notch of Carl. Oh, TZ. the back door. Got no! the base. Coming in. There's a huge wave. Ladies and Sally gentlemen, Sally Boy. Sally Boy Oh, no. that's it! Oh! Oh! Esports eliminate Alter Ego from the playoffs! Have you seen anything like that? As this is the first time we are seeing this being pulled off. And it's coming from the Philippines. They make their mark. They advance to the lower bracket finals. Do you see how hard it is for Bryn to take that game away from Alter Ego? They had to resort into that diversion that came out from their own team, Carl, having this killer instinct, he just went in, went straight for that crystal, and he just broke it.
that was just mindful of Brandy Sports. They knew exactly what to do when, and they saw that there was a wave, and Carl Tizzi just dashed in. Didn't even care about the middle inhibitor. That's it. That's it. Wow. Gideon. Oh. Oh, my God. Unfortunately for Alter Ego, they get knocked out. They played an extremely great game. But welcome to the top three Bren Esports alongside with RRQ and with them it's going to be the Burmese Ghouls. This is a complete change of pace compared to M1. We have two new regions joining the top three. I love it because Burmese Ghouls are the heir apparent. They are literally sitting at the throne. They just have to wear the friggin crown. Yeah, I'm looking at the stats right now and Lancelot for the side of Bren Esports, their win rate is just way too high. You know, we've been discussing on the wrong thing. We we were asking like, you know, who's the better chill? But nobody questioned who was the better Lancelot. And this is very evident out there that this is way too much for Alter Ego to even take. Truly an epic duel between two great teams here. There's no doubt that, you know, the fans cannot be unsatisfied with the performance coming in from both sides at the end of the day. But with that being said, I'm interested to know what the analysts have to say. With that being said, good night. Goodbye, everyone. LaFell, Wolf, take it away. Thank you very much, Castus. And the reason why no one ever asked who is the battle Lancelot, because I thought it was pretty obvious. It was it was Carl Teasy. Anyways, hello everyone. My name is LaFell Teasy as well as Wolf Teasy. Yeah. Right now, we have just witnessed greatness. Where oh. Brand is part one against Alter Ego. And again, M2 now officially have three regions going tomorrow. Oh, that is amazing. That is amazing. And I think uh, Alter Ego Esports, they kind of underestimated the fact that Lancelot for Kalchisi is just way too good. Much like Brand Esports were underestimating the Yuzhong from before, but I think that the growth and the character development for the whole uh, drafter of Brand, e of Brand Esports is so perfect. Yeah, right now we will be looking at the highlights to see more yeah. what happened during the game wolf. You know, it's crazy because I would have, I could have sworn that the losing condition for Brand Esports is if uh, Carl Tizzi dies. And he actually didn't die, at least. Even, not even once. So many good plays coming out from Brand Esports in, this, uh, in the early stages of the highlights. I want to take note, however, that Brand Esports did secure so many turtles. The one, uh, the one uh, team fight that I would say is the winning team fight for Brand Esports will happen much, much later during the latter portions of the game. So, one thing that I want you to look at is how Alter Ego Esports are always try to chase Carl TZ, but Carl TZ, having the back of his team, always wins this. Yeah. And Carl Tizzi has been good even during the the, the, the previous game where every yep. single turtle he was managing to secure it. Exactly. And you know, uh, so many important objectives secured by Brand Esports. And I think that you yourself was Mace. And this might, yeah, this is where we can pause now because Odile, um, interestingly, was kind of caught in a, in a very bad spot. Do take note that um, this is the timing where the Lancelot is very strong. Mm -hmm. the 11 minutes in, just before the first Luminous Lord, with all the items, they have to see his weight of this 905 <laughs> 905. It's so crazy. So here's the thing, right? Um, the Odile went here from this direction. It was already bursted down. And if you're Alter Ego Esports, you will I understand their idea why they still fought afterwards because of the fact that Carl Tizzi already blew his uh, initiation and then the rest of the many sports squad already there. Unfortunately, the bad thing that happened here was they weren't coordinated. You know, there's a saying in uh, Filipino casting mm -hmm. called the uh, one by one audition. Where oh. It, you heard that right? Because yeah. when your opponent, when you or your team goes in one by one, it's like a one by one audition against your opponents, and normally it ends up badly for you guys, right? Yeah. And here's the thing: so Odile, Odile was first, and then Claude from the Lord Lord area. He 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 was the one to to go there. And do take note that they weren't ready for this. Mm -hmm. Jelly Boy himself wasn't uh, wasn't ready for this and do take note that the damage output if you're looking at the minimap the damage output of alter ego esports relies heavily on both the cloud and the link now here's the thing any mobile legends fan or player will say that ling plus cloud equals late game monsters exactly right? yeah unfortunately there's no bridge to connect to that part for the side of Alter Ego Esports. They don't have Wave Player like Chang'o or Farsa. They mm -hmm. have Selena. They may they have Hilda, which is really bad in this patch. Which is coming to my point as yeah. well. 
two things, right, where I think that we can continue on the on the clip, where Yam on the Esmeralda didn't look as good as all of his other picks, and Udil on the Selena as well did not create much impact, and I feel like, like we, we talked about this while watching the game, Selena, all right, you, you got a son, what? How are you gonna get in? Yeah, the, look at his lineup. How are you gonna get in? There is really, literally, no initiation. I wanna say though, Alter Ego Esports. Maybe if the early game potential of the hill that was mustered by this team, if they were able to be successful with it, it will be a totally different story. But that didn't happen because Lancelot was just owned. This, this kind of highlights, right? I feel like we shouldn't pause. We should yeah. do a slow mo. We should of just, of just look at how the burst coming out from one. Carl. Easy. Look at it's this. Like, we can we can actually pause here for a little bit. Oh, they can slow mo. Oh my oh, yeah, god. They do have slow mo. You guys so, can slow mo. So we can pause perhaps here. All right. So in the middle of this fight, you can you will notice that it is actually Pai in here, and unfortunately everybody else from Brandy Sports are in the outer circle. This is the third time I'm gonna say this. Outer circle trumps the inner circle. Now Yam is also in a bad spot. Look at Odil and Chelly Boy. They are in this spot, and Kaltisi says, "Okay." They are separated. My puncture will be maximized. I'm gonna destroy you all. And then they're trying to chase Rebo. Look at Leo Murphy and Yam. They are so focused on taking down Rebo. But they can't see the most crucial heroes coming up from Brand Esports, particularly this um, this uh, Lancelot for sure. And I, I understand why they want to go for Rebo. You want to go for the squishiest target yeah, first, yeah, right? Yeah. Th that's the normal MOBA mentality. Unfortunately, they didn't mind the fact that their cores are also very squishy. Chelly Boy as well as... Uh, as well as Pi, they are going to be destroyed. And I think that if you play this in slow-mo, you're going to see how Cartesi decides to peel through the back lanes of Alter Ego Esports. Then... Right. I just, love our production team. <laughs> this is perfect. This is perfect. And just look just look at this guy. Just look at the, the, that guy. Man. This is a perfect slow-motion moment. Yeah. Just like, yep, this is the ending. This is oh him going for that back door where he's like, you know what? This is brutal. I want to end the game. Yeah. I want to eat. And the last thorn rose, though, you, you, you're going to love that. Oh, my God. If I knew we could do a slow-mo. Man, he, here's the thing. He had immortality. He used thorn rose so that he, there would be no deaths. <laughs> Let's look at the item Let's look at the item build. I'm just... Sure. <laughs> if only I knew. Oh Anyways. Oh my god. This is... Yeah. <laughs> the real MVP, man. The real MVP. Yeah, the right. real MVP. <laughs> Alright, the, the items of Alter Ego Esports, unfortunately, this is very standard for both teams. I want to say, though, it's... Um, the, the gold that Alter Ego Esports were able to make just really won't reach to the point where they are strong. In this kind of situation, I almost feel like all of the gold is on... Carl Teasy, 16, oh. 0, 6. 16 0 6. Like that kind of burst, you know? You're like, hey, how strong is the Lancelot? He, he seems pretty fast. It's like, oh, he might have just, I don't know, maybe finished all of his items by like 11, 12 minutes. You know what? He did not die in game number two. Yeah. So, like, if, like okay, for the head to head, <laughs> if we chose Carl Teasy, he's average KDA, he's, it, it will be off the roof. Yeah, it might be 20, actually. Yeah, like like this is Shangri La, and it will yeah. still be off the roof. Yeah. <laughs> but either way, okay, we're, we're, yeah. okay, seriously, we're gonna look at the items again. So Farsa, the burst coming out from the Farsa is actually pretty high. Where I can see a few of the uh, players, even in, in M2, they try to build more of a utility kind of Farsa. Yeah. But I like what Rebo is doing and fully optimizing on the damage. Yeah. With with Lightning, Trunchion, as well as the Holy Crystal. This might be because of the fact that he has his teammates, uh, like the Baksha as well as uh, the Sylvana, Cho. a little bit tanky, and the Cho. Cho. Yeah. Cho and Baksha combined together two blade armors picked up. And I know that I know you're looking at the right stat right now. Car 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 Carl Teasy. I mean, what are the 24? I mean, who else is going to be the rich guy in the carry? But yeah, let's look at it. Rich guy, 915 gold per. Per second, almost oh. 1,000. But yeah, the carry, 124,692 total damage, Cartesi. And actually, even more impressive, yeah. Sandbag, yeah, 190,000. Almost breaking that 200,000 damage. Almost, almost. That's how much he did. And now, here's a, a very oh, important wait. comparison. I, I I forgot. The forgotten one is Flap Tizi. Uh, yeah, 16 assists. Wow. Yeah, okay. I, I, I forgot about that well one. Well done. But here's the thing. Before we forget, 57,000 for both the Ling and the Lancelot. I think that my math serves me right now. He 
Lancelot dealt more damage than both of the cores of Alter Ego Esports combined. Let me let me let me do quick maths. 56,000, 56,000, 50, 50, 100,000, 7,000, 7,000, 4,000, 14,000. So 114,000. You're absolutely right. 10,000 more than both of the carries combined. Talk about impact and my oh my, I don't think that we should even bother arguing about this. 16, 0, and 6. World class performance from Carl TZ, the child prodigy from the Philippines. I think that in them too, maybe tomorrow we'll, we'll get a new moniker for this guy because I think the child prodigy is way outdated. Yeah, and the thing is, he has to bring the world level Lancelot right here because this is the world championship. He is representing Philippines That's right. as the sole representative. Because again, I just want to remind you right now with Myanmar, Burmese Ghoul, they are waiting in the grand finals and tomorrow brand esports will be